Welcome to another episode of Mel on the Street. Today, I'm joined by Scott Johnson, the CEO of Digital Shovel at Consensus 2025. How are you? I'm fantastic. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining me. You've just come up from the conference. What's your favorite thing so far that you've seen or the most exciting thing that you've done? Uh, Digital Shovel Fest. We're the first time. I mean, we're in our backyard here, our manufacturing facilities here. We've wanted to do a big side event where uh, we can showcase our product, not just showing it, but actually build a live Bitcoin mining farm that people can actually see in person, uh, create a little bit of an immersive experience, show off some of our new tech. Um, it is great to see how much Toronto is embracing uh, Toronto Blockchain Week with consensus coming here. The turnout's been absolutely amazing at the conference and the number of side events just showcasing how big of a crypto community we have here has been awesome. Yeah, so the, uh, you just dropped this product. You announced it during Consensus. Can you tell me about it? Show us what it is, why it's exciting, and why it's a big a big deal. Yeah, so uh, this is the Digital Shovel Blue Axe. Uh, it is based off the BitX uh, open source platform. Shout out to Scott and the whole BitX crew. Other Scott, Scott with a K. Um, this is our variation of it, of a at-home lottery miner. Um, so this can sit on your desk. It takes the same amount of power that charging your cell phone would. Every 10 minutes, a new block is solved. So this is trying to guess a puzzle that gets the right to solve that block or to process that block. Okay. If you are lucky enough to do that, in today's money, in, Canada, in Canadian dollars, you would get $447,000. And this thing costs 100 bucks. And there's a draw every 10 minutes. Over what time period are we talking for that kind of money? Well, your odds of hitting a block in a year are about 1 in 12,000. Okay. So they're not great, but you compare that to like, let's compare it to the Powerball, which is 1 in 300 million. Um, you know, it's not a sure thing. Yes, you could turn it into a conventional miner and connect it to a pool and get a consistent payout, but you're going to get like 10 cents a day or something like that. People are buying this as you know, a lottery ticket that there's a draw every 10 minutes. Um, there's a second version, a pro of that, that has better odds. It's six times more powerful, so roughly six times better odds uh, that we're going to be selling as well. Um, there are, we're not the first ones to create this, but we are the first ones at this price point. They're usually like 200, 300 bucks a piece. Uh, we're trying to make it so everybody has access to Bitcoin mining, the Bitcoin network, and helping to decentralize Bitcoin, um, moving away from the centralization that we see around mining pools. So this is made from a lot of experience, right? You've been mining uh, crypto for many years and you've built over 1,500 mining containers. What, what have you learned from all of this, what what can you tell us? What the purpose is of it, and what where where you're going next? Um, what I've learned, I don't you you can't ever get comfortable. You can't be stagnant. You need to constantly be evolving, uh, which is part of the reason why we are such a vertically integrated company. Like we manufacture almost everything in house. Other other than the actual blank circuit board, we assemble this entire PCB in house in Canada. Uh, we. You know, we were onshoring before it was cool. Okay. Um, it allows us to pivot very, very rapidly. Yeah, just like like I said, just don't get comfortable. Uh, if 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 I'm doing the same thing for too long, I get bored. Yeah. Um, which is I th I think has been an advantage to our company. So what what do you do to innovate then of within the mining containers? Is there innovation happening within those actual containers? A lot of people don't even know what they look like, right? Or can't imagine what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, so conventional containers had, you know, a bunch of servers. I don't think of it we, we originally started with shipping containers. We build our own pods now. Um, but you know, conventional containers had a wall of filters on one side, a bunch of servers, fans that were sucking the hot air out the other side. Um, our new technology we've moved to, uh, our, our marketing slogan is blow don't suck. Um, it blows cold air in, pressurizes the cold side, and then eva and exhausts the hot air out the other side by creating that pressure zone on the other side, um, which allows us to create a, a much more effective ventilation method um, and deals with some of the new miners that are in the market that have a much, much higher power density. I want to pivot now. Um, you, there's so many crypto conferences. You have to sort of choose now which ones you're going to go to instead of making sure that you're at the the one or two that happen per year. And but there's been lots of consensus, but consensus is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the first time that you've done a digital shovel fest. Yeah. So why now? What what made you decide that this was the time? So traditionally, we don't do events like consensus. A great event, 
not a knock to them, but the problem is there's such a small percentage of Bitcoin miners that are there. So if we do a booth, okay. our booth will be slammed. Like everybody will come in, they want to see. It's like it's something you can actually touch and feel, which is not yep. common in the industry. But we get overwhelmed with people that are like, oh, how does Bitcoin mining work? Instead of saying, I want to buy this million dollar data center. Um, having a side event, especially here, allows us, we send some promo, we still sponsor the event. Um, and then we speak at it and then we send promo people to say, are you into Bitcoin mining? Come see our side event. So the people that are coming to our side event um, are in it for Bitcoin. Other than that, um, we don't do much of the blockchain general shows. So we do the BTC shows. So we'll be in BTC Las Vegas, uh, BTC Prague. Shout out that crew over there. They run an absolutely awesome show. Um, but other than that, we do very mining specific shows. Okay. So like Mining Disrupt and some, and some of the other ones. So let's talk about Bitcoin. I don't always love to ask people. It's not just on crypto, but on stocks or whatever. But well, like, people love to hear about price predictions. <laughs> Where do you think we are in this cycle? Where do you see the top in terms of price and when okay. will that happen? D top or, or top, where, where we're going? Where, where are mean, we heading? Where are we I, heading I mean, the, before the, the next? The uh, last podcast in, uh, what was it, a year and a half ago, I nailed the 100 grand in December. Okay. Perfectly. Um, I think this next cycle, um, around 250K US, um, when that cycle is ending, is going to be difficult. I think one of the big drivers, uh, we had our friend from New Hampshire um, down at the site yesterday uh, who pushed through the first strategic Bitcoin reserve. Uh, Arizona followed closely after. Once they move in the US to a federal level of doing that, I think, and, and that'll dictate the cycle. I think that's when we're going to see 250K US, um, year, year and a half. Okay. And then what happens after that? And, and uh, not, just, not just for the price, stuff, but that? what happens for miners? What happens after that? We plummet back, <laughs> we plummet back to like 120, 130. <laughs> oh, yeah. There'll, there'll be a death candle going down. It'll, yeah. it'll happen. Yeah. Uh, but that's Bitcoin. Like I tell everybody and, and friends that are like, oh, where do you think it's going? Should I buy now? It's a good time. I'm like, bro, just buy. You come talk to me in five years or four years, and if you're down, I'll pay you back. Okay. Um, not to everybody it's watching. The not to everybody <laughs> watching. Them, but if it's friends, like if yeah. it's close friends yeah. and family, and and then also, I tell them to you know, if they're comfortable with it, take twenty percent of their risk appetite. Like you know, don't take your whole net worth, but like right. what you're going to do in your risk risky portfolio, throw twenty percent. Me, I'm like you know, I'm a hundred percent. I'm all in. Um, but I'm in the industry. It's different. Um, but yeah, that's where I think that cycle is going to go. And people have to be ready for that volatility. Um, we've become dramatically more stable yes. than we were historically. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you'll still see that huge up and down. Same way when we hit 109, you know, we plummeted back. 70 was, 70s was a great entry point, even low 80s. Yeah. Uh, back at, what, 102 today, I think. What does that mean for mining, though? You've been in it a long time. So how did the, these big price fluctuations, volatility, how does that affect your business? <sighs> You know, it, it's it's always that kind of up and down. There's so many factors that play into it. Um, you know, the the price of mining equipment and infrastructure is always a legger to Bitcoin price and difficulty. Um, people that are outside of the in industry don't often factor in the difficulty rate. You know, our price is nearing back to an all-time high, but hash price in terms of the dollars that are generated based on your hash uh, hash power is you know, we're still back where we were a year ago. Like, although the price is up significantly, what you're making net net in U.S. dollars has not gone up proportionately. Um, you know, and that's always a little bit of an arbitrage play, and, and it bounces both ways. What do you think that people don't understand about Bitcoin mining, and where where is the disconnect? Like, is there? How do we get to adoption? How do we get where you can well, buy we, that for somebody for Christmas? This and, this yeah. is giving them that adoption. Yes. This is like the number of times like my, my parents and um yeah, my, my dad was there and he's like, Oh, was a hundred bucks, I can buy Bitcoin with it. He's like, well, can you give me one of those? <laughs> and like it, it, it's somebody who had never thought about right. Bitcoin mining before. And and this is another reason why we did consensus, is because the you know, the 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 regular people, the regular market out there, um are now being like, okay, I can get it. They'd never thought of getting into Bitcoin mining before. Um, but to 
your earlier question in terms of what one of the biggest hurdles is and you know biggest bigger misnomer is this whole thought that bitcoin is is bad for the environment and mm -hmm. we're bad for energy prices when it is so much the opposite you know power price is based on you know a bell curve you've got your big loop up here is what you're paying for the rest of the time you have all of this underutilized capacity hydroelectric nuclear you know they'll run at peak, maybe 10, 10 or 15% of the time. And the rest of the time, you have that underutilized asset there that is generating energy no matter what. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin mining can come on, take that excess, um, excess energy, create revenue for that resource, and now it lowers the cost for everybody across the board by doing that. Right. So in terms of uh, adoption, so there's education, right? So in order to get more people on board, we need uh, education. Trust. Um, another thing that I had said is product. Having an actual physical product that people can like hold in their hand helps the experience and then understanding and education and and trust as well. I was saying in my last podcast, one of the things like the, the Bitcoin community used to pride itself on community, small community. Right now we want everybody to understand and everyone to be a part of it. It used to be an idea. Like what's Bitcoin? You can't hold it. You can't see it so is this part is that is that part of your idea where um yeah i mean i don't think like it, it was much as a community that was trying to remain you know into itself and not bring in the masses i i, I think most bitcoiners that i know you know scream it from the rooftops like yes you know we we, you know, we refer to uh, orange pilling people like you you mm -hmm. want everybody to be into it i think the way the message is delivered is sometimes not the best. Like, uh, you know, us techie guys are not always the best marketers. Yeah. I mean, I like to think we do an okay job at it, but that's not always the case. We're not the first ones to create this product. There's been, this product's been around for, I think, like other people have been making them for over a year and a half. Um, but they, the way they market is like, oh, you know what? You can have a solo Bitcoin miner that can form your own blocks and it can run on your desk. Cool. How about you just say, like, every 10 minutes you have a chance to win a half million dollars? a little easier marketing and you're helping the Bitcoin network while you're doing it. Um, I think the way we go about marketing and pushing Bitcoin is too technical sometimes. Like, you know, you don't, you know, we, we all use TCP IP to get on the internet. Nobody mm -hmm. talks about that. No. You talk about how the internet's great, mm -hmm. right? Like Bitcoin needs to, you know, f fall into the background a little bit and just be like the standard that we use you don't need to talk about specifically using Bitcoin or block formation or gas fees or all this other technical jargon, which is great. And that's what, you know, helps make the network what it is. What we need to talk about is how it's just making life better and the products and services that it's enabling rather than the technicalities of it. Okay. So going forward then, you've got, the idea is that someone, this is a lottery product, so you can buy this yourself, you can buy it uh, for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the more people that have these, the more adoption there is, right? So the more understanding that there is. I was talking, Crypto Megan was here uh, before and she has all-time high vodka, which oh, has a use case of a, a product. I mean, I was going to get all-time high tequila for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but wait, what's the next? What's the next bit? What's next for, for Digital Shovel? Where's your... Just to clarify, so I don't get in trouble with lawyers, it's not a lottery product for us. I'm, I'm drawing the analogy to a lottery. Okay, yes. Um, because yeah. I can get a whole pile of trouble she's right. saying you're running a lot right um so you know it's it's similar to a lottery in yes that sense. okay uh but what's next for digital shovel um our goal with this was to get our our feet wet with building a miner because we already have the infrastructure mm -hmm. to build the data centers um what jack dorsey and block are doing right now with creating an open source chip uh, on three nano three nanometer technology is amazing and we really hope to be able to you know be in line to be able to get some of those chips to make our own miner in the future okay yeah, on an industrial scale yeah very interesting well thank you so much for coming in and joining me today thank you very I much i hope for you uh, enjoy the rest of the the conference likewise